Welcome to Laptop Radio, where we uncover the layers of blockchain technology and its impact on the digital world today. We're dedicating our episode to a breakthrough in the Bitcoin network, the Runes Protocol. We're in for an in-depth exploration, so sit tight as we unfold the layers of this innovative technology. We have a few AI speakers with us today. Let's start at the beginning. Bitcoin Runes is a protocol that introduces a method for creating fungible tokens directly on the Bitcoin blockchain, leveraging the OP return opcode to embed data in transactions. This approach maintains the efficiency of Bitcoin while enabling new functionalities. The Rune protocol just came out on April 19th during the Bitcoin halving. Blockchain developer AI, what are your thoughts? That's correct. The idea here is to use what's already part of Bitcoin's fabric, the UTXO model, and expand upon it without altering its core principles. By embedding up to 80 bytes of data, Runes can represent anything from meme coins to more serious financial instruments. What is the history of Runes? Let's ask our Rune historian AI. It's glad to help. The history of Runes dates back to ancient times and is deeply rooted in various Germanic traditions. Runes are the characters of various runic alphabets, which were used to write various Germanic languages before the adoption of the Latin alphabet and for specialized purposes thereafter. Here's an overview of their historical and cultural context. The word rune itself comes from the Old Norse word run, which means mystery or secret. This term underscores the runes' association with magic and divination in addition to their use as a writing system. The earliest runes date back to around 150 AD. The earliest runic inscriptions are found in the Elder Futhark alphabet, which consists of 24 characters. It was used by various Germanic tribes across Northern Europe, Scandinavia, and England. The use of Elder Futhark spans roughly from the 2nd to the 8th centuries ad. Runes were not only used for everyday writing, but also had ritualistic and magical significance. They were often inscribed on monuments, weapons, tools, and jewelry to invoke protection, luck, or power. This dual use reflects the sacred and profane applications of the runic alphabets. Over time, as the Germanic tribes evolved and spread, the runic alphabets diversified. The Elder Futhark gave way to several younger runic forms. Younger Futhark developed in Scandinavia around the 8th century. This script reduced the number of runes in Elder Futhark from 24 to 16. It reflects changes in the Old Norse language and the needs of its users during the Viking Age. Anglo Saxon Futhark. This version expanded the Elder Futhark from 24 to anywhere between 26 and 33 characters. It was adapted to account for the sounds found in Old English and was used extensively in England before being gradually replaced by the Latin alphabet. The use of runes declined with the increasing influence of Christianity, which brought the Latin alphabet as the literary norm. However, runes did not disappear entirely. They saw sporadic use for special purposes and were subject to scholarly interest and mysticism, especially during the Renaissance and later in modern times. In contemporary times, runes have been embraced in various cultural contexts, often tied to heritage and nationalism, as well as in neo-pagan groups like Asatru, who view them as symbols of ancient wisdom and links to a mythic past. Runes thus have a rich history that spans practical, linguistic, magical, and spiritual realms, deeply embedded within the ancient Germanic traditions. Their legacy continues to influence modern esoteric practices and cultural expressions. Awesome. Fascinating. How does this compare to other token standards like Ethereum's ERC-20? Our blockchain developer AI would know. Hmm. Ethereum's approach is more flexible in terms of smart contracts, but it's heavier on the network. Bitcoin Runes aims for minimalism, which can be a big advantage in terms of speed and lower transaction fees. Let's dig a bit deeper into the technical insights of runes. Exactly does one create a rune? And what are the technical steps involved? Let's ask our cryptocurrency analyst AI. Good question. The first step is etching, where you define your runes properties, name, supply, and so on. This information is encoded within a Bitcoin transaction using the op return space. Following that, there's minting where the actual tokens are created according to the etched specifications. What's the differences between runes and ordinals? The Bitcoin runes and ordinals protocols each introduce unique capabilities to the Bitcoin blockchain, catering to different needs within the ecosystem. Ordinals focus on creating unique, non-fungible tokens by inscribing data onto individual satoshis, the smallest units of Bitcoin. This allows for the creation of unique digital artifacts, such as images or text, directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. 
Ordinals are inherently unique due to their association with a specific Satoshi, and they store data in the witness section of a transaction. This limits the size and complexity of the data, but enables the creation of the one-of-a-kind assets often used for collectibles or digital art. Runes, on the other hand, are designed to facilitate the creation and management of fungible tokens, similar to Ethereum's ERC-20 tokens, but built on Bitcoin. They use Bitcoin's unspent transaction outputs UTXOS to store token data, which allows for more flexibility and potentially larger data capacity compared to Ordinal's witness section. Runes are designed to be fungible, where each token of a particular type is identical to another, making them suitable for use as currencies, loyalty points, or shares in real-world assets. The Runes protocol aims to integrate seamlessly with Bitcoin's existing infrastructure, enhancing its usability without causing significant disruption. In summary, while ordinals cater to the creation of unique, collectible digital assets, runes are aimed at expanding Bitcoin's utility by enabling the creation of fungible tokens that can serve multiple economic functions. This distinction not only highlights the diverse applications of blockchain technology, but also underlines the adaptability of the Bitcoin network to support a wide range of asset types. What challenges do developers face when working with this protocol? The founder of the Runes protocol is Casey Rodarmer. He is also known for his work on the Ordinals protocol, which he developed prior to proposing Runes. His contributions focus on expanding the capabilities of the Bitcoin blockchain through innovative uses of its existing structures. Since there are limited bytes, the I information must be extremely concise. There's also the aspect of network acceptance getting miners to recognize and validate these new types of transactions. How do Runes ensure security on the Bitcoin network? The Runes protocol on the Bitcoin network ensures security through several key mechanisms. One, the UTXO model. Runes leverages Bitcoin's existing unspent transaction output UTXO model. This model is already proven to be secure for managing Bitcoin transactions. Each transaction output must be fully spent, and each new transaction is confirmed by the network, maintaining the integrity of the transaction chain. 2. OP Return Function The protocol uses the OP return opcode in Bitcoin transactions, which allows for embedding data into transactions without affecting their spendability. This data is provably unspendable, meaning it cannot be used to fraudulently transfer value, and thus it secures the token data embedded within these outputs. The use of OP return ensures that Rune's transactions do not interfere with the normal operation of Bitcoin's blockchain, maintaining network security and efficiency. 3. Protocol enforcement through scripting. Runes transactions are defined and enforced through Bitcoin scripting. This includes the validation of transactions where if a protocol message is invalid, the associated runes are burned, preventing misuse or fraudulent creation of tokens. This mechanism ensures that only valid and authenticated transactions are executed, maintaining the integrity of the token system. And finally, minimized impact on blockchain size by using the op return field and the efficient storage of token information in UTXOS, Runes minimizes its impact on the Bitcoin blockchain size. This approach helps in maintaining the overall health and performance of the Bitcoin network, preventing issues like blockchain bloat, which can affect transaction times and costs. These security features integrate closely with Bitcoin's robust, decentralized model ensuring that Runes operate securely within the existing framework without introducing significant new vectors for attacks. This careful design aligns with the main principles of Bitcoin and leverages its built-in security features to create a reliable platform for issuing and managing tokens. Let's discuss the economic impact of Runes, switching gears to the economic implications. What does the introduction of Runes mean for Bitcoin miners? Let's ask our economic expert AI. Miners stand to gain additional revenue through transaction fees for processing Runes, especially after the Bitcoin having any new source of revenue is likely welcome. And what about the broader Bitcoin community? It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, this could lead to new uses and increased demand for Bitcoin, 
On the other, it introduces complexities that could deviate from Bitcoin's original promise of simplicity and minimalism. Let's compare runes with other protocols. How do runes stack up against other token creating protocols on Bitcoin, like RGB or Taproot? This question goes to our blockchain developer AI. Each has its merits. RGB is more complex and versatile, while Taproot enhances privacy and efficiency. Runes, however, are designed for those who prioritize straightforwardness and minimal blockchain impact. It seems like a balancing act between functionality and maintaining Bitcoin's original ethos. Exactly. It's about providing options. Different users and use cases will prefer different solutions. Looking ahead, what's the potential feature for Bitcoin runes? Where do you see this technology going? The initial response is crucial. If the community sees practical benefits, adoption could grow, leading to a richer ecosystem of Bitcoin native tokens. This could redefine how we see Bitcoin's role in the wider blockchain landscape. And what are the risks? There's always the risk of fragmentation or creating systems that are too complex for users to understand and use effectively, which could deter adoption. What are the real-world applications of Runes? The Runes protocol, by enabling the creation and management of fungible tokens on the Bitcoin blockchain, has the potential to support a variety of real-world applications. Here are some of the key uses. Digital currencies. Runes can facilitate the creation of digital currencies that are native to the Bitcoin network. These can be used for everyday transactions, reducing dependency on traditional financial systems and enhancing the accessibility of digital money. Loyalty and reward programs. Businesses can use runes to create loyalty tokens that reward customers for their purchases or engagement. These tokens can be redeemed for goods, services, or discounts, encouraging continued patronage and enhancing customer relationship management. Asset tokenization. Runes can be used to represent shares in real-world assets, such as real estate, stocks, or commodities. This tokenization process makes it easier to buy, sell, and trade these assets, often with lower transaction costs and increased liquidity. Gaming and virtual goods. In the gaming industry, runes can be used to create in-game currencies or to represent ownership of virtual goods and properties. This application can enhance the gaming experience by enabling secure, transparent transactions within the game ecosystem. Identity verification and access control. Tokens created via the runes protocol can serve as means of identity verification or access control. For instance, a company could issue tokens that serve as digital passes, granting token holders access to restricted areas or services. Financial instruments. Runes can also be employed to create more complex financial instruments, such as derivatives or insurance policies. These applications can benefit from the inherent security and transparency of the blockchain. Charitable donations and social impact tokens. Non-profit organizations could issue tokens via runes to track donations transparently or to create social impact bonds that fund specific charitable projects with returns to investors tied to the project outcomes. These applications showcase the versatility of runes in facilitating a wide range of economic activities directly on the Bitcoin blockchain, making it a promising tool for various sectors seeking to leverage the benefits of decentralized ledger technology. That wraps up our deep dive into Bitcoin runes. Thanks to our AI guests for their insights and thank you, our listeners, for joining us on this exploration into the cutting edge of Bitcoin's evolving technology. Stay curious and keep exploring the blockchain universe with us. Until next time on Laptop Radio, keep your transactions secure and your wallet safer. Goodbye. A pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.